Industry Regulation and Safety acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people as the traditional custodians of this land on which we deliver our services. We pay our respects to elders and leaders past, present and emerging. Hello everyone, this presentation is intended to give a quick overview of the draft Building Amendment Regulations 2022. In 2018, Building and Energy began a review of private swimming pool and safety barrier control in WA, which started with addressing the recommendations made by the Ombudsman in its report, Investigation into Ways to Prevent or Reduce Deaths of Children by Drowning. This review was finalised in April 2021 with the public release of the decision paper. The decision paper sets out decisions made by the state government, including both regulatory and non-regulatory measures. The draft building amendment regulations implement the relevant recommendations from the decision paper. The amendments are quite technical in nature and are designed to improve, clarify and update the requirements for private swimming pools and safety barriers. The department is now seeking specific feedback on the operation of the draft building amendment regulations to ensure they are going to work as intended. Please note that policy decisions have already been made and are not up for debate. Comments can be emailed or posted in hard copy and must be provided by the 25th of November, 25th of October, 2022. The draft building amendment regulations encompass the following areas of reform. Number one, amending the definition of private swimming pool to put beyond doubt that spa baths are not included. Just to be clear, spa pools remain covered, but spa baths, the type that are used for washing and that are generally drained after each use, are excluded from safety barrier requirements and from inspections. Number two, modifying the building standards to provide an alternative compliance pathway for boundary barriers. Currently, a boundary barrier needs to be at least 1800 millimetres high on the pool side with, no, with non climbable zone five at the top. The draft building amendment regulations introduce the ability to use a boundary barrier that is 1200 millimetres high on the non pool side, as long as there are no steps, retaining walls, objects or level changes within 500 millimetres of the non pool side of the boundary barrier and as long as non-climbable zones one, two, three, and where applicable four can be achieved. Number three, modifying the applicable and specified building standards to remove inconsistencies in application. This includes removing the inconsistency between the applicable building standard for unauthorized works and the specified building standard for pre-May 2016 private swimming pools. Number four, future-proofing the applicable and specified building standards to provide for the automatic adoption of future editions of the Building Code of Australia without creating inconsistencies for existing private swimming pools. Number five, changing the way the initial compliance of safety barriers for new swimming pools is controlled by removing the building permit requirement for fences in areas other than wind regions C and D and removing the requirement for the builder to provide a safety barrier inspection certificate and replacing them with a mandatory initial or first safety barrier inspection for new pools by the local government. This also includes a one-off fee to assist in cost recovery for this service. The new initial safety barrier inspection is also applicable to any private swimming pools that are the subject of Part 8 Division 2 that for any reason have never had a safety barrier inspection by the local government. Number six, introduce mandatory local government reinspections of non-compliant safety barriers. Some local governments were not carrying out reinspections of non-compliant barriers. Now they will have to. Number seven, increasing the maximum annual charge for periodic four yearly safety barrier inspections to enable better cost recovery and to include reinspections. And finally, number eight, introduce a mandatory annual requirement for local governments to provide data to the building commissioner on the progress of their periodic four yearly inspection program. While most local governments have been providing this data voluntarily, there has been a small number that have not. This will make it mandatory. And that's pretty much it. Again, comments can be emailed or posted in hard copy and must be provided by the 25th of October, 2022. Thank you, and I look forward to receiving your feedback.